Starship 2.0, Hurricane Dorian threatening SpaceX, Starship updates and Falcon 9 booster preparing for Crew Dragon. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. Today I've got a co-host here and he said he likes it so much that he's going to stay. So I cleared out some shelf space and gave him some freeze-dried ice cream. I don't mind having him live in the studio, I set up one rule though, keep quiet while I record. So everyone please welcome Starman. Starman? This is the audience, smile for the camera. If you're interested who does the artwork for What About It, make sure to check out the link in the description, it's worth it. Miss Mooney Sky is incredibly talented. I can be very proud to call her a team member and you will see a lot more of her work in future episodes. Now that we got him properly introduced, there has been a lot of things happening in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates now that Starhopper has had its grand finale, it is history and we can look forward to seeing more news about the Starship orbital prototypes in Boca Chica and Coco. The Boca Chica construction site has seen many additions over the past couple of months. We've seen landing pads being added, roads being built, structures being raised. SpaceX has been busy for a reason. Starhopper was only the beginning. Now that it did its final flight, it will become a vertical test stand for Raptor engines and the next main attraction then will be the orbital prototype SpaceX is working on with an insane pace. So what has happened here over the last few days? Water tanks have been delivered by truck and placed on site. Might be for fire protection for future launches or possibly the rainbirds for Starship. As there is only salt water in the area in natural form and that can be used by firefighters, it would definitely make sense to store some of the water on site just in case. Water has been delivered as well by truck. So SpaceX might be in a hurry here, possibly to fulfill FAA regulations for an upcoming Starship launch license. In general, the Boca Chica Starship site is very busy. Lots of cranes standing close to the orbital prototype. This might mean that we will see the fins mounted soon. The nose cone is down again and as you can see in the close up, SpaceX is drilling. And the drilling went very fast as the ground is super soft in the area. This is piling work, possibly for another jig and this time for Super Heavy. As Super Heavy will be larger and heavier, the pilings are very deep. According to the markings on the drill, they went down 30 meters, that's 100 feet. I am not an expert, but that sounds sufficient to me. The rebar, which you can see here, already went into the holes and concrete trucks have been sighted as well. So construction is continuing everywhere at the Boca Chica site. A whole different story is unfolding in Coco at the same time. Hurricane Dorian threatening SpaceX. Florida, the sunshine state, where you can lay on endless beaches and enjoy the Caribbean climate without actually having to leave the continent. Most of the time, Florida is known for being some sort of paradise. Warm, lush, lots of tourism and rocket launches for free. Sometimes though, the Atlantic Ocean shows its ugly face. Where there is warm and moist air, there is a lot of energy stored within it. If this air finds the right conditions, it can form tropical storms. And if these tropical storms get really angry, they turn into a hurricane force wind that destroys everything in its path. Hurricanes in fact are amongst the most dangerous natural disasters by death and damage done to infrastructure in Florida, according to the Federal Emergency Management Agency. What you're seeing here, by the way, is Katrina. It was a category 5 hurricane and one of the worst natural disasters in US history. It reached wind speeds of up to 280 kilometers or 170 miles per hour. SpaceX's MK2 Starship is right next to KSC, which is located on the east coast of Florida, right in the path of all north going hurricanes that form in the Atlantic Ocean and right now the next hurricane is on the way. Called Dorian, it is going straight for the Florida Peninsula and will, according to the latest predictions, go past KSC and SpaceX's Starship construction site just slightly off the coast. Predictions see it at a category 3 hurricane with wind speeds of up to 205 kilometers or 160 miles per hour when it's closest to KSC. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration or NOAA is doing its best to predict the path, but it's still hard to tell if it will hit the orbital prototype. 
How strong exactly the wind is going to be is also hard to tell, but we can expect up to 25 centimeters or 10 inches of rainfall in the area. So it's safe to say that these will be some tough conditions for SpaceX to handle. KSC and the 45th Space Wing at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station have already enacted Hurricane 5 and 4 respectively. These are procedure plans to secure the station and KSC for an arriving hurricane. Everything is being sealed and secured, trucks are being fueled and everything is being prepared for the worst. And SpaceX is doing the same. As hurricanes are almost a certainty in Florida each year, SpaceX planned ahead and built a solid storm shelter for its orbital prototype to be locked away in as soon as one arrives. Work at the construction site has been stopped altogether and all the workforce available is being redirected to prepare Starship Mark II for Dorian's arrival. The prototype tank section has been secured inside the storm shelter. This is built out of thick metal beams and should withstand the hurricane with ease. The fairing, nose cone and the ring segments have been tethered to the ground. If a lot of damage is being caused by Hurricane Dorian, it will most certainly set back the progress at the Coco site quite a bit. So let's cross our fingers and send some good wishes to SpaceX via Twitter. They are doing their very best to protect the construction site. Starship 2.0 what separates Starship and Super Heavy from every rocket that has been before besides its full reusability? Right, its power and its size. It will most certainly be taller than any rocket in human history before and its internal volume compared to a Saturn V is gigantic. But who would Elon be if that was the end of the road? If we know anything about him and his companies it's that they never stand still. When they were still working on perfecting the Falcon 9, they were already planning Falcon Heavy. When they were working on the first Falcon Heavy launches, they were already in full design work on Starship. So what are they doing while they are building the Starship prototypes? Right, they are already working on the next step. Starship 2.0 I really hope we will see at least some slides about it at the upcoming presentation in Boca Chica on September 28th, but we can already say this is going to dwarf Starship 1 if it is true at all. Someone on Twitter asked Elon if there was a 12 meter diameter version of Starship like the original interplanetary transport system from 2016 planned. Elon tweeted back that they won't do a 12 meter version. Instead, they will make an 18 meter diameter Starship next after Starship 1 is ready for business. I found a good comparison online for what we talk about here. Scale when it comes to rockets is a difficult thing. Everyone knows Star Trek and most have at least some sort of understanding how big the classic Enterprise is. So here you go. SpaceX is apparently approaching the Federation Constitution class Starship by size. I mean, I don't even know what to say here. That would be as large as the Woolworth building in New York. If you double the diameter, the cross section is quadrupled. In theory, SpaceX could put four times as many Raptors within that diameter, giving it a thrust output of roughly 280,000 to 360,000 kilonewtons. It would put Starship 2.0 at a mind-boggling 40,000 metric tons of liftoff weight though. 196 Raptors would be needed to even lift it off the ground. Even if Elon only referred to diameter and not height increase, which is possible, as rockets are height limited due to their thrust per area, we'd be talking a diameter that is wider than a standard basketball field. This is all highly speculative, of course, as it is based on a single tweet by Elon, but hey, we can dream, right? I want to see at least one or two slides of that at the presentation. Elon, please make it happen. Falcon 9 booster preparing for Crew Dragon. Now that we've talked about the biggest rockets possible, let's talk about its, in comparison, very tiny brother, the Falcon 9's plan to get humans to the ISS again from US soil. It has been confirmed by internal sources that the boosters supposed to carry Crew Dragon Demo 2 with astronauts Bob Binkin and Doug Hurley towards the ISS is B-1058. The first booster after four months of quiet to be tested in Hawthorne. Unusual for such a busy launch provider. Now the only thing that's still missing is a firm date for the launch. There still is the official timeline by NASA, but that can be seen like more of a placeholder. It puts Crew Dragon Demo 2 at November 15th and Boeing Starliner at November 30th. 
At least the SpaceX date seems more and more unlikely and it is to be expected that the launch date could slip into 2020. SpaceX is still working on implementing changes into Crew Dragon systems to prevent further accidents with the Super Draco in-flight abort system. Another capsule needs to be built as well as SpaceX will be conducting the still to be executed in-flight abort test with the capsule originally planned to be used with the Demo 2 mission. This huge undertaking though will fully human rate the Falcon 9 Block 5 rocket which gives SpaceX the ability to fly astronauts to the ISS on a regular basis. So it is definitely worth it. Go SpaceX! So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? Will SpaceX be able to save the Coco construction site from Dorian's wrath? And did Elon mean it seriously when he talked about the 18 meter diameter Starship on Twitter? As always, tell me in the comments. Welcome to the shout out to the best people in the world, our patrons, helping What About It? to get better each episode. Again, a few brave space enthusiasts have started supporting us and joined us on our Discord server. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Morton Anderson and Sammy Oscuro. It is good to have you in our ranks. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to subscribe and like as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me more time to focus on what I really love doing, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Fries Dreed ice cream. <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> I don't mind living in the studio. For you. In Boca Chica and Coco. That is... <laughs> to protect the contraction. Size and power. That was a good one. Yeah. Ha <laughs>